Hello, welcome! My name is Natalia and this is my channel, Official Mermaid's Cove, where I share my cross-stitching and some other crafty things. Uh, thank you for coming to watch and spend some time with me. Um, this video is going to be my second weekly update for May, and I really don't have a lot to show you. Um, I had family come in and visit um, all this past week. Uh, they just drove back on Sunday. So the only whip that I really worked on was my Ever After Sal. Um, this is being stitched on 32 count Belfast linen. Um, this is Ever After linen dyed by Forbidden Fiber Co. Um, I bought the kit for the Ever After Sal. Um, so I'm using the Forbidden Fiber Co. threads for the Sal. Um, I have the threads right here. Um, yeah, so I've been stitching with the purple 520 boysenberry. I've been doing all the frames. So this is going to be a uh, weekly release starting the last Monday. I think it's Memorial Day at the end of May. So I have stitched all of the purple frames. I actually have it kind of upside down. It's actually supposed to go this way with that long frame at the bottom. I cannot get over how beautiful this fabric is. I'm so excited. So I've stitched all the purple frames. So um, there's still an outer gold frame to stitch and I'm going to be stitching that with the 1101 Gilded Cage color. There's two skeins of this. There's the second one. Um, so I'll be doing that and I kind of already started over here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So it's going to be an outer border um, outside of the purple frames that I've stitched. Um, so uh, I can, I've can i been taking this to work. This has been my um, work project. So that's why I was still able to get some stitching done. But um, mostly when I got home we were out and about doing things, spending time with the family. So, so that's really all I worked on this past week. Um, I'm going to try to, I still want to work on, you know, Mira May, but, uh, I'm going to take this, probably taking this to work for the rest of the month. Um, so I'll continue to work on that. And since I have all the purple stitched up, it's going to be a lot less counting to do. I just have to kind of follow right the outer edge these frames so hoping that will be a bit quicker not having to spend as much time counting that out um, I already finished some of my goals for May but I still have a goal I have not stitched on this one at all this is where my other whips I haven't stitched on this this past week but this is what I'm gonna start um, putting some work in now that I have some more time and uh, now that I've at least got some of the frames stitched for the Ever After Style, so if they start doing the chart releases, then at least I can know where to position it. So I can still continue to work on the frames, even if I don't have all the frames finished and stitched up by the time they do the first weekly release. Um, but this one is one of my Gecko Rouge kits. This is called Dracaris. It's based off of artwork by Dalen Ogden. I'm stitching this on 28 count. Uh, gridded even weave. I'm doing um, stitching this two over one tent stitch. Um, I have not worked on this at all since I showed it last week. Um, I still have 2700 stitches that I would like to get on this this month. Um, it shouldn't be too bad because uh, I'm doing tent stitches. Um, uh, last month I was doing just solid color so it went by really quick. So um, I'm go just going to try to get some more stitching done on the flame motif frame here and then switch over to doing um, the dragon and then working on Daenerys. I'm thinking maybe I'm this month I'm just going to get some more work done on the frames, but I'd like to get probably going to start stitching on this some while watching Floss Tube after I finish recording this video. Um, but that's basically all I have. Um, this is being stitched with DMC threads. It's a kit, so it came with... Um, all of the colors um, 
I've done... I've completed one Gecko Rouge kit and I still had plenty of thread. I think I maybe cut it close on some colors, but there was still plenty of thread in the kit, so I don't have a... I'm pretty confident I'll have enough to finish stitching this, but we'll see. This is the biggest Gecko Rouge kit I've done, so we'll see how my thread usage goes with that. Um, so that's really all I have to show as far as what I worked on. Um, I do have some haul. I went shopping with my family. Um, as far as crafty haul, you're going to hear it a little bit crinkling. I went back to the thrift store, the crafty thrift store that I have nearby called So Ducking Right. Um, I, so we had a bunch of storms. That was one of the other reasons why I haven't been doing a bunch of stitching. Uh, we, we've been having a lot of uh, thunderstorms and um, tornado warnings. We had the power flickering on and off and um, lost power a couple times. So I went ahead and got, they had a bag of tea lights. So when the power does go out, if it is nighttime, you know, if you still need to go to the bathroom or something, um, these are good to light and just have some kind of light. Um, we do have, you know, you can use your phone flashlight. Um, you can, we do have flashlights, like, positioned around the house, but, you know, but batteries can always run out, etc. So, I always like having some tea candles, tea lights. Um, so they had a, you know, partial pack for 50 cents, so you can't really beat that. So I bought that at the thrift store. Um, I also got, I was planning on doing some fabric dyeing. We did not get to that. We um, got caught up in, like, Mother's Day celebrations and all that. Went and got some pedicures, went out to eat, and we did not get to doing any fabric dyeing. But at the craft store, they had these. I guess they use these in scrapbooking, but I was interested because it says it gives a, a glitter effect. So I bought like a purpley one, a green one, and a blue one. So I thought it'd be interesting to try it out on fabric. It says it's acid-free, non-toxic, water-based. So I won't be able to wash the fabrics afterwards, which, I mean, I don't wash any of my hand dye fabrics regardless. But it'll be interesting. So this one says it's blue raspberry. This one is called money bags. And the purple is called purple rain. So I'll be interested in using those. Um, I am planning to do some fabric dyeing towards the end of the month. Um, I have some projects that I'm thinking of stitching up um, either this year or next year. So um, as I start getting the charts together, I'm probably going to start going ahead and preparing my fabric for that. Um, they also had some Sharpie pens. I think they had them for like 50 cents each. Grab some of those. They had this. It's just like a circle punch. But you can go deeper in than you could with like a handheld hole punch. So I thought that'd be good for like um, doing different things when I'm making like my cards when I do my zipper pulls or my uh, scissor fogs um, this can come in handy it was only two dollars um, they did I got some more this is some of it is DMC they have their DMC for like 10 cents so can't beat that this is 939 you know those full coverage projects I asked for a lot of the darker colors so I found that and 3371 and these are CXC threads um I've been I stitch a lot of mermaids so they call for a lot of the blues 797 796 and then I got 310 because you can always use some black I've, I've also I haven't really stitched a project solely with CXC threads but I've heard that they're a little fluffier so maybe the black will stitch up a little fuller not that I necessarily have problems with my full coverage projects but um, it would be interesting to see what the difference is issuing with the CXC black. Yeah, so I got those. Um, trying to think. Yeah, I think... Oh, wait. Okay. So last time, I showed you that I got these little figurines. They had them. They're like, you know, 25 cents, little quarter bin that they had. They apparently glow in the dark. I haven't tested them out yet. I don't know if... Yeah, I have to put them in, like, some sunlight. Does it look like that's... I don't know. I'll have to try them out. But, um, they mentioned that some of these can glow in the dark. Maybe it's not all of them, but... So, I meant... I, I showed this one in my last video. It's a little frog. 
I showed this one. It's a little ducky and it's got like glitter. So it's like a white glitter ducky. And then I bought this one, the last one I went to the store. It reminds me of like the little gecko newt creature in Frozen 2, the second movie. So cute. So yes, I'm getting a little collection of tiny creatures. Um, the other thing I got wasn't a crafty thrift store. We just went to like a typical, it's called City Thrift. And I found something similar to like the one that I've, uh, it is a wallet, but it's like sewed. And I've been, I used a similar one of these to take with me to work. That just has like a set of scissors, needles, um, some of the cable ties that I use, the magnetic cable ties to hold my needles, um, thread. And I can do like smaller projects in it and it also helps me have like supplies on hand for um, if I forget to bring scissors or something. It's just something basic that I have in my work bag. So I'm probably going to put this in like a separate to-go bag that I take with me just around the house or if I'm leaving the house for places because I just typically don't take things in and out of, out of my work bag just so I have everything that I need for work. So it's velcro shut and it has a place to put like a strap if you want to hang it over your shoulder. Um, the other one that I have also has like an area where you can feed it through like your belt or a strap if you wanted to carry it like a bag. Um, this is like a clear sliding pocket here. It's closed off on this end. Um, so you can put something in here and actually see what's there. Uh, it's got the pocket. This is very similar to my other wallet. This is where I keep my scissors on my other one. Um, it's got some clear pockets here. Um, you know, clear panels here. This is all fabric. If I wanted to, I could maybe, you know, thread some pins in there or I've been using this to like keep some bobbins or uh, different colored threads. Um, it's got a zipper pocket here, another pocket back here where you can put things. Um, and then when you close it, it's got an additional pocket that's velcro shut on the back. So lots of places to put stitchy things. And this is all padded, which I like that because then if I'm either dealing with multiple colors if it is a smaller project, I can just kind of stick the needles onto the top and then uh, put them away later. So yeah, and I thought it was really nice fabric. It's got, I guess this is like, almost looks like dragonfly. It's, it's kind of like a glittery gold foil to it. So I like the color patterns. It's just two bucks. So yeah, I thought that was a really good find. So that's it for a haul. Um, I hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. Um, I know for some people it's very difficult, uh, but I feel like there's always somebody in your life, right? That's a mom that you can celebrate with and enjoy it with. I'm very happy that all of my grandmothers are still in my life, uh, my mom is still in my life, my mother-in-law is still in my life, so I have plenty of amazing women to spend that weekend with. Um, we went with my mom, we got some pedicures, we took her out to eat, you know, got her flowers, etc, etc. Um, gifted her a few goodies, um, so we got to spend the whole day with her and really um, enjoy some time with her. Uh, my sister brought her pup with her, so my puppy dog got some puppy socializing in. She had a lot of fun and then also kind of took her out. Her dog is still like in her puppy mode and my dog, we she's a rescue. She's like five or six years old, so she's kind of like, she just likes to be calm, take naps, and the puppy just wants to play. So she was like harassing her sometimes, <laughs> wanting attention, and all my puppy wanted to do was just nap. But yeah, I think she does maybe miss her a little bit, though. I'm sure she enjoyed having another puppers in the house. Um, so last thing that I have um, to share, um, this kind of short one, but um, I've been watching some nice floss tubes here lately. Um, a lot of people that I used to watch have come back. Uh, Laura Gurr, she's somebody that I've mentioned in the past. Definitely go check out her flossy channel. She has a lot of good tips and tricks for full coverage cross stitch. Um, I think I mentioned she's the one who gave me the tip about 
putting extra floss away for like a when you have a full coverage with a bunch of different colors where you can create like a paper um, chart or just print off the page that has all the floss colors and like thread your floss in there to like store the extra pieces away so you don't waste any pieces that you might not use that color in the section that you're stitching quite yet instead of having to try to put it back in the floss card or whatever storage you're using sometimes that can make that messy so or you know even winding it around that little bit of floss around if you use bobbins she gave me that idea um so she has a lot of good things in the videos that she already has and she recently posted a video after having like a two-year break so i'm excited about seeing another video from her um stone cold coffee crafts i don't know if i've shouted them out on my channel um they're the ones who really inspired me about doing this kind of a setup for my floss tubes i had kind of held off doing it because i didn't necessarily want to be on camera i want to focus on the stitching um so um want and they have really good videos they've also taken a break here lately um but um you would enjoy watching the videos that they do have she has an adorable uh ragdoll cat that's super cuddly and always wants to be in the videos at least i think i'm not a cat person i think she's a ragdoll you can go to the channel and see for yourself um another person i've been watching is jessica queen of the crop stitcher i love her videos i love um all the whips that she's working on she works a lot on full coverage but she also um does she like crops the images to focus on what like captured her about the artwork or the pattern and it saves uh, her a lot of stitching time but she still gets a beautiful finish at the end of it and um some of the projects that she's done it she's it's been like really creative about it and they look beautiful when she stitched them up um and she has a lot that she's working on right now, so by all means, go and check her out. Um, Katie on FlossTube, uh, she has a recent video that she showed I found really interesting. Um, definitely go check out her FlossTube. She has beautiful projects that she works on, and um, I enjoy watching her. Um, another person um, that I've watched recently is Maria the Green Stitcher. She also has a lot of cute projects that she's working on. Um, I really enjoyed watching her videos. Um, Crossers the Globe, um, they shouted me out again on the channel, but it's like, I don't know, it feels like we're just going back and forth at this point. <laughs> um, but, you know, they do regular releases and they put out some tutorial videos and I think I just recently watched their video where they went through their whips and, like, the types of stitchers that they are um, and the pros and cons to that. Um, okay, and the other thing I wanted to share is Autumn Lane Stitchery. Um, I saw that Cassandra posted a video, well, not a video, she posted a post that I saw on Instagram. Um, so Autumn Lane Stitchery is a husband and wife duo. Aaron, uh, designs the pattern, but Cassandra's like his artistic director. <laughs> she like, um, gives him ideas for what to do or like, you know, will he'll bounce off, uh, patterns and she'll, you know, stitch them up and see if they're like stitch friendly and, and, and uh, different things like that. She's currently working on doing a model stitch of their My Little Minnow pattern. Um, I finished that one earlier in the year, the beginning of this year. And as she's stitching it, she mentioned that there's going to be a release of a merman. I don't know if that's like, I don't know, she's mentioned soon. So I don't know if it's like we have to wait until the summer to get it, but I am so excited. I told her I'm going to be stalking their social media to see when the pattern gets released. Um, I know they mentioned they were going to be doing a mermaid box as well. So that's something else to watch out for. Um, Cassandra mentioned that they're waiting because they make their own needle, needle minders. And I think the machine that they use for that was down. So I don't know if they're waiting for that either to have somebody else do it for them or... I don't know if that's the only thing that they're waiting on, but she mentioned that's one of the things why they haven't, really, like, had signups for the mermaid box yet. But I know I'll be signing up for the mermaid box if they come out with that. If that pattern's in the mermaid box, you know, two-in-one. If not, I'll probably be getting it regardless. Um, I'm getting really close and a lot of good progress in with my, uh, the Beauty and the Beast pattern from them. And I have two more mermaids, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm like, getting really excited about the summer and... I have plenty of mermaids that I want to stitch, but there's something about their patterns that I always have super fun time stitching them. So by all means, um, they do have a FlossTube channel. Follow them on FlossTube, follow them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram, follow all the socials and be on the lookout if you're interested in stitching up mermaids, especially a merman, a merman pattern. This will be the first merman pattern from Autumn Lane Stitchery. So 
I'm very interested in what it's going to be and what it's going to look like. Okay, so that's all I had for this video. It's kind of a shorter one. Um, yeah, I just haven't been stitching a lot. Just been spending some more time outside, spending more, you know, more time with my friends and my family, you know, all good things. Um, and hopefully we'll get a good bout of, of milder weather. Not as many storms that we've been getting. The rain is good. It's when it starts getting into like thunderstorms, tornado area that gets crazy. We had a whole shopping strip that got pulled up from a tornado end of last year that was so close to the house and I'm just trying to be like can we just get a break just get a break <laughs> thankfully my house hasn't been affected to where I had damage but you know a lot of my friends were affected and stuff like that and I just I would like to have a break from <laughs> crazy storms for a while um I know there's other areas that are having storms too. Oh, I noticed, I didn't see it myself. I don't know if it's just where the house is. A lot of people got to see the Aurora Borealis um, here in the States. There was a good viewing area for that. Um, you could just see it from outside your house. I've seen a lot of friends post pretty good pictures from where they were at. I don't know if I was just wasn't paying attention that day. By the time I realized what it was, I think the t moment had passed. But um, I know people have been sharing beautiful pictures on social media. So I will be more than happy to just see the pictures. Um, did you get to see that? Let me know in the comments. Um, it looked pretty cool from the pictures that I saw posted. Um, but yeah, I hope you had a good weekend. I hope things are looking up. I hope you stay safe if you're also experiencing this crazy weather from the changing of the seasons. Um, stay safe. Uh, you know, when they call the tornado warning, do seek shelter. Don't just... <laughs> Uh, shrug it off. You know, these storms are popping up more frequently, it seems, and we do have to take them seriously, right? Um, but yes, hopefully everything's going good. Um, I'm really excited about the weather warming up, excited about the pool opening up and getting to do all those summery things. My husband's been making homemade um, sherbet or sorbet. I'm not cultured enough to get the technicality of what the difference is there but it's delicious he's made some strawberry lemonade and mixed berry both were good so i'm looking forward to more summer frozen treats and ice cream and the pool all those things um and i hope you have a good summer too um and hopefully i'll have more progress to show my next video <laughs> but thank you again for watching and um until next time happy stitching